wannabe poet turned rock star Jim Morrison had his own agenda. He wanted the world, and he wanted it now. Though the Doors' cerebral lyrics and psychedelic sounds kept them on the charts, it was the Lizard King's brazen sexuality that defined the group. Tried to run, tried to hide, break on through to the other side, break on through to the other side. Did not want to be rock star Jim Morrison. He wanted to be taken seriously and did not feel that uh, that, that was happening. Jim Morrison was, uh, was sex on a stick. Um, and he was the stick, too, so he was the whole damn package. Uh, he was the man who made leather pants not just uh, an idea but a reality. He was also a poet. Now, Morrison was uh, one of the first people to feel this as a contradiction. Come on, baby, light my fire. Come on, baby, light my fire. Try to set the night on fire. Morrison's inner demons, as well as his love of alcohol, earned him the reputation of an unpredictable performer. A pivotal moment in the Doors' career came in 69, when an inebriated Morrison took the stage in Miami. Miami really turned into a disaster for the Doors. Jim was drunk out of his mind at that show. He put his hand in his pants when he was on stage and, and kind of threw his head back like he was enjoying it very much and uh, interacting with the guitar player and, you know, uh, getting down on his knees and, you know, making gestures and doing uh, masturbatory type gestures. Rock photographer David Levine was there. Now he's telling his story for the first time on camera. They said that he actually exposed himself and I was at the foot of the stage for the whole concert, pointing my camera at Jim most of the time. I didn't see him do anything of that nature. Others told a different story, and a few days after the show, a warrant was issued for Jim Morrison's arrest. We have taken out two warrants for Jim Morrison. One of them is for indecent exposure. The other is for the use of obscene languages. Uh, during his performance uh, at Dunner Key Saturday night. Morrison later found himself in front of a judge, jury, and witnesses to that night's performance. I was cross-examined by the prosecuting attorney. He said to me, did you see him make any masturbatory type motions? I said, well, sort of. Then the judge says, enough of this. Young man, please stand up. I stood up. He said, now do it again and stop your hand at the lowest point. So I did the hand motion again, and the judge says, let it be shown that his hand is opposite his belt buckle. Because basically that's what Morrison was doing. He was doing, you know, one of these numbers, you know. And the whole time I'm, I'm looking right at Morrison when I'm doing this, and he's got a grin on his face. And even afterwards he had said to me, you know, great show. This is the end, beautiful friend. When it was over, Morrison was convicted of indecent exposure. Whether he actually exposed himself is still debated to this day. The verdict was a statement by the establishment about the evils of sex and rock and roll. A last grasp at decency as the standards of previous decades unraveled. There was a lot of uh, political stuff going on. I mean, it's the first time rock and roll has ever gone on trial like that. Morrison died in Paris in 1971 before his appeal was heard. Ironically, the rock star who desperately wanted to be taken seriously as a poet remains an immortal sex symbol. The, the Doors drummer said that Jim couldn't have pulled his penis out on stage in Miami because if he did, he would have tripped. So I guess that's the, the final, ultimate, flattering tribute to Morrison. This is the... Uh...